You have 60 seconds to open this door before I kick it down. A woman walking alone on her way home from a night out. Open the door. A man walking away from his flat. The two will intersect with each other. He's got a knife in his neck. A struggle appears to occur. The woman goes to the ground. But again once up. He told her he was coming after her. The man is walking her across the street. Global True Crime brings exclusive details in a true crime story of young lady namely Marta Schmielecka whose killer did not accepted rejection. Before starting the case, we would like to request you that do let us know in comments that as per your views, who is to blame in this tragic case of Marta Schmielecka murder. In a small town nestled away in Kettering, Marta and Pavel's story began like any other. They met, fell in love, and tied the knot in 2016, moving to Kettering shortly after to be close to Marta's family. But behind closed doors, their fairy tale took a dark turn. Marta, a kind-hearted woman, endured years of mistreatment at the hands of her husband, Pavel. After four years of suffering, she found the courage to leave, seeking solace in her own independence. Despite their separation, Marta still showed kindness, occasionally visiting Pavel's room in Wood Street to cook for him. Little did Marta know, one of these visits would mark the end of her story. In 2020, Pavel visited Marta at the shop where she worked on Rockingham Road. He was upset and confronted her about her interactions with other people. In a fit of anger, he grabbed her phone and searched through it, looking for evidence of wrongdoing. Marta suffered injuries from Pavel's violent outburst, leaving her with bruises and a cut lip. The police were called, and Marta initially made a statement, but later withdrew it. Pavel apologized as part of a community resolution process. Feeling unsafe, Marta decided to leave Pavel in September of that year. However, Pavel's harassment didn't stop. He continued to call and send messages, making Marta's life difficult. The following year, during Easter in 2021, Pavel's aggression resurfaced at a family gathering. He pushed Marta around, displaying his violent tendencies once again. Just months before Marta's tragic death, Pavel confronted her at the Warren pub, where he intimidated her by grabbing her arm. His behavior escalated, and he was reported for harassment the following month. Despite the turmoil in her personal life, Marta remained dedicated to her job at Siva in Corby, working a four-day on, four-day off schedule. On a chilly Friday evening, Marta headed to her friend Daria's house. She carried a small bag, anticipation shimmering in her eyes. Throughout the evening, she exchanged messages with Alexandru, a colleague, but amidst the excitement, messages from Shmielitsky, her ex-husband, interrupted her peace. Earlier that day, Marta had sternly messaged Shmielitsky, pleading for space and peace. However, Shmielitsky's desperation grew. He confided in friends, expressing his anguish at the thought of Marta with someone else. Determined to know her whereabouts, he reached out to a friend near Daria's house, hoping for clues. Disappointed by the news that Marta wasn't at Daria's, Shmielitsky persisted, bombarding Marta with requests, even asking her to deliver a pizza to his flat. However, Marta stood her ground, refusing his demands. As the night wore on, Shmielitsky's messages grew more ominous, his tone unsettling. One message sent shivers down Marta's spine. I'm on my way to get you. At 10.40 p.m., Marta left Daria's house, walking along Wood Street towards Rockingham Road. Unbeknownst to her, Shmielitsky also ventured out, his footsteps echoing hers. The events that followed were captured partially on CCTV. Marta had been walking along at a steady pace. She was captured on CCTV. The next thing that's seen is Powell, holding her arm. Following the struggle, Marta appeared disoriented and upsets. Powell put her in a bear hug. As they neared his home, 
a ring doorbell recorded Marta coughing and also showed she may have been quite injured. Powell can be heard saying come on, not far now, can you hear me? And in those chilling moments, the stage was set for a tragedy that would shake the quiet streets of Kettering to their core. At 10.56 p.m., inside the Wood Street terraced house, Pavel, consumed by jealousy, seized Marta's phone to scrutinize her messages for any hint of romantic involvement. He snapped photos of the messages, looming menacingly over Marta. It's believed that shortly after, he unleashed a vicious attack, stabbing Marta 32 times, leaving 19 wounds on her face and neck, and 7 on her hands as she fought desperately for her life. Just before 1 a.m. on Saturday, October 16th, Pavel messaged friends while continuing to document Marta's phone messages, the red splatters marking the grim scene. I'm sorry, but I loved her. She was my everything, he confessed. On Sunday, October 17th, at 8.45 p.m., Pavel made a routine trip to a shop in Rockingham Road, purchasing six cans of beer and a soft drink. The following day, he impersonated Marta, sending messages from her phone to male contacts, attempting to arrange meetings. Growing increasingly worried, Marta's family noticed a shift in her messages. Instead of her usual phone calls, impersonal messages arrived, and Marta failed to show up for work in Corby her sister-in-law went searching for her. After a call to the police, officers rushed to Wood Street. Unable to get a response, they forced their way in. You have 60 seconds to open this door before I kick it down. Open the door. Bravo! Inside, they found Pavel lying on his side, a knife embedded in his neck. Another blood-stained knife lay nearby. He was bleeding heavily from up to nine knife wounds in his neck and was rushed to hospital for emergency surgery. Police found out that Pavel's injuries were due to his own acts. Marta's body, partially unclothed, was wrapped in a blood-soaked duvet. Two notes written in Polish blamed Marta's alleged deception and unfaithfulness for her demise. The community was stunned by the tragic turn of events. Marta's gentle spirit had touched many, leaving them in disbelief at the violence that had unfolded. On October 21, after his injuries were confirmed as non-life-threatening, Szmielicki was arrested in his hospital bed on suspicion of Marta's murder. Although he refused to comment in interview, at Northampton Crown Court on March 3, 2022, he admitted killing her. The investigation into Marta's death, run by detectives from the East Midlands Special Operations Unit EMSOU, uncovered a picture of a jealous, controlling man who had stalked, made threats and had been violent to Marta since the end of their relationship. As the investigation unfolded, it became clear that Marta's journey to freedom had ended in tragedy. A post-mortem showed Marta had suffered 32 sharp force injuries, 7 to her right hand, 5 to her shoulders and upper arm, 1 to the left breast and 19 to her face and neck. A combination of the stab wounds to her neck were the direct cause of her death. At Northampton Crown Court on Wednesday, September 6, Szmielicki was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 18 years and 4 months. This was reduced by the time he has spent on remand to 16 years and 170 days, after which the parole board can consider if he is able to be released. His Honor Judge David Herbert said, It's clear from the evidence that Marta was scared of you and was frightened you would end up killing her. Those last moments of her life would have been utterly terrifying, as you stabbed her repeatedly in the neck. You accept you intended to kill her and must then have watched her die lying in a pool of her own blood. Detective Superintendent Joe Banfield, who led the North Ants Major Crime Unit at the time of the investigation, Marta, said... Marta uh, was a much-loved young woman. She was uh, a sister, a friend, an aunt, and 
she had a very bright future ahead of her. Uh, that future was extinguished by the actions of a violent and jealous man. He wouldn't accept that his relationship with Marta was over, despite her repeatedly telling him that it was, and her repeated attempts to distance herself from him. Tragically for Marta, um, his efforts to maintain a hold over her and to remain in a relationship with her had a tragic ending. After a violent and sustained attack using a knife, he remained in his room with Marta for up to three or four days. Throughout this investigation, despite the overwhelming evidence, he refused to fully admit his part in what had happened, which has led to an almost two year delay in the family receiving justice today. I'd like to pay tribute to her family at this point, who despite the delays, despite the harrowing nature of this crime, have remained dignified and have dealt with everything thrown at them with a, a creditable amount of candor. I'm pleased today um, with this sentence. 18 years and four months is a significant period of time that he will spend in prison. But I acknowledge that whilst the legal process is over, the pain and hurt felt by Marta's family and friends is far from over and his violent actions will live with them forever. I hope that he reflects on his actions over the next 18 years and four months, the minimum period of time he will spend in prison, and that he will become a better person for it. Finally, I would like to thank everybody involved in this investigation. Violence against women and girls is a clear priority for Northamptonshire Police, and I hope that we've demonstrated to the public that when tragic instances like this occur, we are very quick to bring perpetrators to justice. But this was far from an, a solely Northamptonshire effort. Um, officers from all over the East Midlands were involved in, in this investigation. Um, they all know who they are and they didn't do this for thanks, but I'd like to thank them for their dedication and professionalism. Thank you very much. Respected viewers, thank you for watching. If you found this content intriguing, please consider liking the video. It greatly supports me within the algorithm. Don't forget to subscribe for more global true crime stories.